Hi, welcome back. In this session, I'd like to start the first of five webcasts I'd like to do on the terminal value. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, in discounted cash flow valuation, the terminal value is the biggest number in your valuation. It's the elephant in the room, and when it moves, you notice. So let's step back and think about why this number became as big a part of DCF as it is. So let's go back to basics. The discounted cash flow value for an asset is the present value of the expected cash flows on that asset. So if you have an asset with a life of n years, 5, 10, 15 years, I can get the expected cash flow in each of those years, discount them back at a risk-adjusted discount rate, and what you get as a present value is the value of that asset. Simple enough, right? But let's say your asset has a life of 30 or 40 or 50 years. You might not have the energy or the resources to estimate cash flows for that long. So what you do is you estimate cash flows for 3, 4, 5, maybe 10 years, and then you stop. But when you stop, you've got to put closure on your valuation, and the terminal value is the way you put closure. So the way to think about uh, the terminal value is it's a number you attach to year 5 or year 10 to reflect all cash flows beyond that point in time. Simple enough, right? So let's think about what this terminal value is supposed to measure and how to come up with the number. If you open up any textbook or you've taken a class in valuation, you're presented one and only one way to get the terminal value. And that is to assume that your cash flows beyond that last year, year 5 or year 10, grow at a constant rate forever. It's called the perpetual growth model. What we've effectively done is stolen from mathematics because this is the present value of an infinite series and the terminal value then becomes the cash flow one year after. So to get the value in year, year 10, I need the cash flow in year 11 divided by the difference between the discount rate and that growth rate you expect to maintain in perpetuity. Now these cash flows and discount rates can be defined either in equity terms as cash flows after debt payments and a cost of equity or to the entire business as pre-debt cash flows and a cost to capital, but that is the way we put closure in an intrinsic valuation. Now, if you've been told this is the only way to get a terminal value, you've been lied to, because there are at least two other ways which are legitimate ways in, within the intrinsic value framework for, for getting the terminal value. The first is to assume instead of a perpetuity where your cash flows continue forever, that your cash flows will continue only for a finite period, a 20-year, 25-year period. In fact, to give yourself some, some sense of what this number could be, you can even assume that this cash flow will grow at a constant rate for the next 25 years. If you assume a constant cash flow, it's called an annuity. If you assume a growing cash flow, it's called a growing annuity. And there are present value equations you can use to capture what the value of those growing annuities or annuities will be. So let me take a simple example. Let's assume you have a, cash, you have a, you have a business you're trying to value. You got your cash flows in the next five years. They start at 100 million, go to 125, 150, 175, and year five, you get to 200 million. Beyond year five, you expect the cash flows to grow at 2%, not forever, but for the remaining 35 years of this asset's life. So this is not an asset which lasts forever, but it's a 40 year life. Instead of estimating the cash flows for all 40, year, 40 years, here's what you can do. You can estimate the cash flows of the first five years, which you've already done. And at the end of year five, you can use the growing annuity formula, and you can see it listed on this page. And if it looks daunting, don't be daunted. Just open up your calculator or your Excel spreadsheet. You should be able to compute it. And that gives you the value of all cash flows beyond year five. 200 million growing at 2% a year for 35 years and you see the present value. Notice that that present value gets brought back to today by discounting back five years. Now, you might wonder, why five years if I'm using the year six cash flow? Because when I take the present value of those 35 years of cash flows, I actually move the present value to the end of year five, and therefore it has to be discounted back five more years. So the value of a 40-year asset can be computed using a growing annuity. Now, you might wonder why, if you can do this, we ever use perpetuities. There's a practical reason. If you take that example that I just listed and look at what the terminal value would be with a 5-year, 10-year, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50-year life, you'll notice that as I get out to 40, 50, or 55 years, the terminal value starts to level off. In other words, once you get past 50 or 60 years, you might as well use forever. The equation is simpler. The value you're going to get, of a, uh, if in this case, 3.4 billion, is barely different than the value you'd have got if you reduced to 65-year cash flow. The bottom line is we, we, we use perpetuity assumptions not because we're blind to the fact that forever 
is a really long time. It's because the number you get with a perpetuity is pretty close to what you'd get if you had a really long-lived asset. So you can estimate the terminal value using a annuity or a growing annuity formula. You can also, in some cases, estimate the terminal value using a liquidation value. What is that? At the end of year 5 or 10, when you're done estimating cash flows, you assume you shut the business down and you sell the assets for whatever you can get in liquidation. You might want to use this if you have a company, if you have a business that effectively is worth more as liquidated assets, as pieces that you can sell off, than as a going concern. And in fact, if you have a business where you have a bounded life, where you have a lease for 10 years, at the end of 10 years, you're not sure that that lease will be renewed, you might be better off just estimating cash flows for 10 years, at the end of 10 years, liquidating the business and getting whatever you can from your assets. So let's summarize. You can estimate the terminal value using a perpetual growth model, as the textbooks and the, and the classes suggest. You can estimate the terminal value using an annuity or a growing annuity. You can estimate the value using a liquidation value. But you know what? The approach that gets used as an alternative to the perpetual growth model most frequently is the one approach you cannot use within the context of an intrinsic valuation. And here's what people do. They estimate the cash flows for the next five or ten years, and at the end of the fifth or the tenth year, what they do is they take an operating metric, revenues, earnings, book value, and apply a multiple to it. So for instance, if they have the EBITDA in year 5 or 10, they might say, well, I'm going to multiply it by 8, 8 times EBITDA to come up with my terminal value. You might say, what's wrong with that? Well, if you think about where you get that 8 times EBITDA, it's usually by looking at other companies in the pure group and what they trade at today. Now, you might still wonder, what's wrong with that? That's a pricing. And when you make the biggest number in your intrinsic value of pricing, you've essentially replaced intrinsic valuation with pricing. I have no problems with you pricing assets, but don't price an asset and call it an intrinsic valuation. So the one approach that many bankers like to get terminal value is an approach that's incompatible with intrinsic valuation because it effectively makes your DCF into a pricing. So what's the bottom line? It is true that in traditional DCF, you know, models, the terminal value comes from using a, a perpetual growth model. But it's not true, you're stuck with it. If you want to use an annuity, go for it. If you want to use a growing annuity, that's fine. If you want to use a liquidation value, I can live with that. The one thing you cannot do, though, is applying a pricing to get that terminal value and call it a discounted cash flow valuation. I hope this helped you. Thank you very much for listening.